this is Ariana Sono from La Fille de la Mer, and this is a really big box. Um, so actually, a couple of weeks ago, I placed an order from Custom Craft Tools because I wanted some new molds. Um, and uh, because I like some specific colors, I had this one custom made for me, and I'm super excited to open it with you guys today. Always carefully. I get one at each order <laughs> from Custom Craft Tools. Yay. I have three now, I think. It's so pretty. Ah, oh, lots of peanuts. Oh. I have a love and hate relationship with packing peanuts. But I can tell that these have been repurposed because they're a combination of the styrofoam and the biodegradable peanuts. So, and they will also be repurposed in my own shop. So it's all good. Oh, look at that. Okay, so this is a Goliath, Goliath soap mold. It's big. Okay. All right, I'll be right back. Covers are here. Lala. Okay, so I also have these two mini molds. It's a blue, blue Goliath. Wow, so, so pretty. So happy. Wow. Wow. Okay, so these, these are absolutely adorable. These are actually a soap saver soap molds. So when you make a batch of soap and you have a little bit of extra leftover for whatever reason, because you're doing sculpted layers or, or you're piping and, or your mold is full and you have overflow, you can use these tiny baby molds and they will make a, it's a one cavity soap mold, but it has these cute designs at the bottom. Um, so yeah, this, this uh, allows you to not waste any soap and you can keep them on the side and use them whenever you need them. By the way, Alex just launched a skull baby mold. I want it. <laughs> I want it. I'm going to have to place another order. By the way, I am an affiliate uh, of Custom Craft Tools, and I will leave my links down below if you'd like to purchase these types of molds. They also have smaller molds, medium molds, all types of sizes. And the name of this company is called Custom Craft Tools because they can custom make things for you, which, which is a great example here. This is not something that was listed, and I specifically asked Alex to make a custom color Goliath for me and I got my custom. You may pay a little extra for the custom, but you can get exactly what you want, what you need. Um, so, so yeah, pretty cool. Okay, um, what's really neat about these bigger, bigger ones <laughs> is that they come with a clear lid, which allows you to see your soap when it's in gel phase. So I'm just gonna remove the protective layer over the, uh, I, I don't know if it's acrylics or a plexiglass, but anyhow, it's, it's transparent and it fits perfectly, makes a really nice seal. And as always, they have these uh, one inch marks and sliding sides. What better way to inaugurate a soap mold than making soap with it? So I am in full swing holiday soap mode and I am making a new soap, uh, a new holiday soap, and um, it's a blend uh, of uh, red berry rhubarb and sleigh ride fragrance oils from Brambleberry. Um, I mix them both together. It smells so delicious. We're gonna be coloring it with a, a uh, one of my personal blends to make a nice red soap color. And then I have uh, titanium dioxide, and we will be using the Queen's Purple Mica from Brambleberry. And tomorrow, once the soap is done and if everything goes as planned, I will be piping the top with white soap and we will dust it with some gold. Um, it's called Gold Shimmer Airbrush Mica and this one is by the, the Fizz Fairy. So I will leave all of the links down below if you like colorants like me for soap making. Um, some links are affiliates, some aren't but all of them I have tried, tested, and enjoy working with. They are also all skin safe and ethically produced.
In my stock pot, I have a combination of shea butter and cocoa butter by Baraka Shea Butter. I also have some coconut oil, palm oil that is ethically produced, organic, sustainable, and you can get all of this information uh, to learn more about this type of palm oil from palmdonright.com, and I will leave the links below. And then I also have some olive oil. Okay, so I have reached a very light trace. This is just past emotion, and I don't want to over stir because we have lots of coloring and lots of swirling to do here. Time to split the batch. I want to take no chances. I'm going to start by stirring with a spatula. And these colors are just beautiful. Mm. I'm going to stir once around the clock. <laughs> Wow, so pretty. I was originally gonna do this soap white, red, and green, but I've, I've just made a red, white, and green uh, Christmas tree soap this morning, and I was like, I don't wanna have two soaps <laughs> that are the same color. So we swapped the green for this beautiful purple, and I'm actually really happy that I did that. So I'm gonna insulate the soap so that it stays nice and warm, which will help it to firm up. And let's bring in the icing. All right. So the first pour has firmed up a little bit and uh, this one is not quite ready to be piped, but that's okay because I do want to layer a little bit of soap on top. And this is kind of just to make sure that I do have some white piping everywhere on the top of this soap. Now I find that these types of gloves kind of slide on my piping bag, so I'm going to put these on right on top. <laughs> it's faster. And
Okay, and the reason why I did two piping bags is that refilling a sticky piping bag is not super easy. So I have the second one right here, ready to go. And that's much easier. I am done for today. I put all of that piping on top. My arms are a little sore, so before making a batch this big, make sure that you can handle it. <laughs> it can be quite hard on, the, on your arm muscles. And I'm gonna insulate my soap, and we will be back tomorrow to dust it with some gold mica, and then unmold and cut it. Okay, we are back uh, on the next day after making this uh, Christmas candy soap. Uh, that's I'm not sure if that's gonna be the final name I kind of have to see it to name it but that was like my temporary na temporary name um, holiday or Christmas candy so you can see just from the, the the light shining on the mold it's a beautiful day today that uh, this mold is really well sealed all the condensation is on the lid so we're gonna open this up and unmold the soap I don't want the condensation to fall onto my soap, which is why I dumped it on the table. And I have a rag here ready to go. I hope you can see it in the camera, but it says custom craft tools right here on the corner. Now, these molds are super easy to uh, unmold. Sometimes when I have a flat top soap or something that's not like pointy and piped like this, I just flip it over and remove my liner. But because I don't want to break all of this piping, we're just going to go a little differently. But already you can see that the release is beautiful. And here's what I do. I push out the corners and I kind of walk my soap out, out of the mold. Come on, just gotta break that little suction. There we go. And then push left, push right. And usually it just slides out. Voila. And then again, left, right, left, right. Voila. It's out. Before cutting this soap um, in the caterpillar, I'm gonna put it back flat on the table. And I'm going to take my gold mica and we're going to dust the top. And to make this super extra shiny and, you know, in, in the holiday spirit, let's add a little bit of uh, biodegradable glitter. All right, this soap is so shiny, it's so festive. I absolutely love it. Now uh, I'm just drying my gloves very well because when you pick up a slab uh, of this size, you wanna make sure that your hands are dried, that the soap sides are dry because otherwise it's gonna slip. <laughs> it's, it's soap, it's slippery. So up. I put it back on its side and then I'm gonna put it on the caterpillar. I've adjusted my wire at 3.5 inches and we're just gonna slice it in four pieces. a cake. <laughs> it's so pretty. Voila. And up. This is so lovely. I love, I like, I love the side cut. Let, let's hope that the inside will be as pretty. So cute. Okay, the moment of 
truth. We are gonna slice these babies and this soap is so beautiful. I love the colors. They turned out so great. I'm so happy that I did not use green <laughs> in this soap. And it's super festive. It can it could be a Christmas soap, it can be a New Year's soap with all of that gold and shimmer on top. It's so nice. And it smells fabulous. I, I'm cutting on the side because I don't want the mica to drag down inside the soap too much. Wow. Voila. Um, the soap, the idea behind this soap was inspired by a soap that I made many years ago. It was called Ribbon Candy, and it was actually made with a fragrance oil that was called Ribbon Candy from Brambleberry. Uh, the colors were a bit different, but it was like a in the pot swirl with a uh, piping top. But then I changed my whole formula, I didn't use the same formula, and uh, also uh, there was no gold on top like this, and I think that this looks just very cool. <laughs> This soap is for all of you kings and queens. It's so beautiful. I can't wait for this soap to be done curing. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, that's it for this video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this new soap, or you can also give me your name ideas. I was thinking about calling it Holiday Candy because uh, it looks so yummy <laughs> and it's so shiny. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope you learned something. If you're a soap maker, don't forget to check out the description box down below as I have always useful links for makers. I have my affiliate links that also do help me support my channel, my business, and my family. And if you're a maker, I invite you to join my Patreon campaign where you can learn to make soap and other types of handmade cosmetics every month. Thank you so much. Have a great day and see you very soon. Bye-bye.